As Great Britain says farewell to Queen Elizabeth, we're learning more about King Charles. Our next guest knows him well. Lord Simon Woolley built a relationship with the new monarch after advising him on the Black Lives Matter movement. Lord Woolley, we thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, first off, let's just find out how you got to know King Charles. Well, I've known him for over 20 years, but increasingly during the Black Lives Matter unprecedented protests after the death of George Floyd and the tens of thousands of people that took to the streets here in the UK that wanting uh, persistent race inequality addressed in an effective way. That Prince Charles invited me to his house, Clarence House in London, to talk about how we give hope and how we give opportunities to young black kids, actually not just young black kids, young black and white kids who are on the street protesting about systemic race inequality. And what was that first conversation like? I'm curious what he asked you about and, and what your impressions were afterward. Well, I'd spoken on many rallies and meetings saying that this was a time for leadership. This was the time for white allyship. And it got back to him that I was a person that he needed to engage with. So I thought we'd be meeting on Zoom. It was the time of COVID where everything was locked down, but no. He said, I want to meet you face to face at my house and we can have an adult conversation about how our institutions are working against black people, how we give hope, how he as then the future king can show the leadership that I and others were demanding of him and others. And I have to say that the conversation was scheduled, Lindsay, for 30 minutes. It lasted two hours. Oh, wow. And then we had further meetings and further meetings, and we got other people involved. So it was a kind of adult conversation that you would expect from somebody that begins to, in no small measure, get the enormity of the challenge and says to themselves, What's my role? And so you feel that he gets it? I, I think he gets it more than most. Um, I mean, a few, a few months later, uh, he came to, to my college here behind me, which is a prestigious Cambridge University college. And he said to me, I need to come to your college to show support to you because of what you stand for team in diversity, race inequality, equality of opportunity. And I think this is the hallmark of, I hope, is a, a modern king. And you've brought up the word equity uh, a few times. And I'm curious, as you've built your relationship with him, how big of a priority are issues of uh, equality and, and fairness for him? I think it's part of his DNA. And I think it's part of the things that most people have not understood. I think there's two things that he cares about most of all in his life. Uh, one is uh, the climate, uh, the climate challenge, which he's been speaking about this before it was even fashionable 50 years ago. And two is equality, which is, you might say, Lindsay, is kind of ironic from one of the most privileged men on the planet. And yet, having worked with him, having spoken to him, that I know it's true, we, we would be in meetings with a uh, hundred people, and he would like a, he would make a beeline to me, and he would lean in and say, "Lord, Lord Woolley, uh, how can I help? How, how can I do more?" You will know, Lindsay. There's still questions to be asked by the the royal family with his past involvement in the enslavement of Africans. We cannot change history. History is what it is. What we can do is build for a better future. I'm curious. Um, if you anticipate that that kind of conversation uh, might happen, um, the direction now uh, that, that you would tell the king that he has to go with regard to race relations and, and bringing people together, because, you know, there, mm -hmm. there are certain people who believe, even after that, that interview that, that Harry and Meghan did with, with Oprah Winfrey, that that, you know, they're, they're racist. And, and of course, you know, it, it's hard to, to group a, a bunch of people, right, with that kind of label. But, but what will be, you know, what you whisper into the king's ear as far as trying to move the meter beyond that? The, the stuff that you, you mentioned about the family, 
you know, it is, I would argue, a missed opportunity that the that Harry and Meghan are not central to the royal family because to me, that is 21st century modern Britain, a monarchy that, that is black and white. Um, but they've chose to go their own way. That needs to be respected. But I hope that in in small but significant measure that comes back to the fore because in effect it will show a modern monarchy that is literally multiracial that is that it does have a voice and speaks to who we are today Lord Simon Woolley, such a pleasure to talk with you could ask you a number of questions really appreciate uh, your time tonight thank you Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.